Hey fourth graders, so we're still working with area and perimeter, but today we're going to be looking at how we can have shapes, rectangles, that have the same area and a different perimeter. Okay, so let's think again, what is the area and what is the perimeter? All right, we had talked about this yesterday. Remember, the area is the amount of space that it takes up. We use square units to talk about area. So in these pictures, you notice that they're drawing using squares, okay? So the total number of squares that are used equals the area. So to figure out the area of this rectangle right here, I could simply just count the squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There's 16 square units, okay? The perimeter would be all the way around the outside of the shape. And to figure out the perimeter, I count the squares around the outside of the shape. Okay, and that's gonna give me the perimeter. Per perimeter, <laughs> sorry about that. My mouth just, looked, you know when your mouth just goes blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and apparently that's what mine just did. Okay, so when we are looking at the same area and different perimeter, we want to think how can we use the same number of squares to still make a rectangle, but have the sides add together differently to come up with a different perimeter? That's what it's saying, okay? So we can draw pictures to help us out. You guys can see right here, here's an example. So we have, this one has an area of 16, all right? So these other two rectangles also have an area of 16. This one has four units here, four units here, four here, and four here. So four plus four plus four plus four. Four times four is 16. So this one actually has an area of 16 and a perimeter of 16. It has the same area and perimeter. Okay, but here, we have the same number of squares. If I count them, there's still 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, right? There's still 16 squares. So this one, the area is still 16, but it's only one up and it's 16 across, one up, 16 across. So I would be adding one plus 16 plus one plus 16. Well, 16 plus 16 is 32, 33, 34. So the perimeter on this one is 34. Do you see how I changed that? Okay, here I'm taking the 16 squares. I have two up and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight across. So eight plus two, there's, oops, there we go. The area is still 16. There's still 16 square units, but eight plus two is 10. Eight plus two is 10. The perimeter equals 20, okay? So there are different ways. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Totally just pulled my earbuds out. Hopefully that didn't make a weird loud noise for you guys. <laughs> anyway, uh, my arm just went jam down right on my cord. So there are different ways that we can arrange it. Notice here, I just tried some different things. This strategy is actually a really good strategy in math, and it's one that's underutilized so much. It's called guess and check. All right, and you may be thinking, Ugh, I don't want to guess and check. But guessing and checking is a great strategy, especially if you don't immediately know how to answer something. Try something out and see if it works. This is a strategy that's used all the time, okay? Here we have a table. Um, and basically, we want to think are what are different ways that we can arrange the 16. So this is where factors are going to come into play, right? I know that I can get 16 by doing 1 times 16. I can get 16 by doing 2 times 8. And I can get 16 by doing 4 times 4. That right there let me know the different ways that I could arrange it. I could have a length of 4 and a width of 4. I could have a length of two and a width of eight. I could have a length of one and a width of 16, or I could have a length of 16 and a width of one, a length of eight and a width of two. And that's what you see in this chart. And then, you know all of those are gonna multiply to equal your area of 16. So then, you simply have to add them 
all together to figure out your perimeters, your different perimeters, which is what we were doing up here. So when you see a problem like this, what are the different ways that you can draw the rectangle? You're going to immediately say, well, I know that for area, I'm multiplying. So I'm going to use my factor rainbow to help me figure out how are the different ways that I can multiply to get that number. And then you simply add to figure out what the perimeters would be. Let's look at another example. Okay. No. Hold this in half so we can see it a little bit better. All right. It says, look at the rectangle below. Draw a rectangle that has the same area, but different side lengths. So let's see how what the area is. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. It has an area of 18. Oh, come on, guys. Come back again. All right. So what are my factors of 18? Well, I could do it having a length of 1 and a width of 18. This one has it 2 times 9, right? Are there other ways to get 18? Yeah, right? 3 times 6. So I could pick either this one or this one to draw, okay? I could pick either one. I'm going to do the 3 times 6, so I'm going to kind of draw it out and then draw in my rectangles. All right, it has to be 3 down and 6 across. So I still have an area of 18. What would be my perimeter? It says look at the rectangle you drew for problem 13. What would be the perimeter? Is it the same, greater than, or less than the perimeter of the rectangle shown? Well, now I have three, one, two, three, four, five, six, three, and six. Three plus three, it's three plus three is six, and six plus six plus six equals 18. So my shape has a perimeter of 18. This shape, we never even figured out the perimeter, but let's go ahead and do it, has 2 plus 9 plus 2 plus 9. 2 plus 9 is 11, and 11 plus 11 is 22. So this perimeter is 22. So which perimeter is bigger? Mine is less than this right because 18 is less than 22 okay let's look at another example I'm gonna make one up all right if I have a shape that has an area um, of let's say it has a width of 2 and a length of 10 all right so my area is 2 times 10, it equals 20. What are other ways I can multiply to get 20? I'm going to use my factors to figure that out. I can do 1 times 20. So if I did that one, right, I'd have the 1 here and the 20 here. I could do 2 times 10, which is what I have. I could do four times five, so, right? All of those are gonna give me an area of 20, but what are the perimeters of each of these? This one, remember, it's all the same. Two plus 10 is 12, plus 10 plus two, that's another 12, so 12 plus 12, the perimeter equals 24. Here I have 21 plus 21, which equals a perimeter of 42. And here I have 9 plus 9, right? 5 plus 4 plus 5 plus 4 is 9 plus 9, which equals a perimeter of 18. What do you notice happens to the perimeter? As the sides get closer together in length, the perimeter gets less, right? Right here, these are really different in length, so it has a much bigger perimeter, where when the sides are a lot closer together in length, it has the smallest perimeter. That's really interesting. Hmm.
All right, so I want you to practice. Use your factors to help you out. This is how you're gonna figure out what are the other ways you can arrange it. You're gonna use your factors. And I will see you guys in the next video where we are going to be looking at same perimeter, but different area. All right, see you guys next time, bye.